Hey, I'm Singh, and today I'm going to be reviewing the beloved Royal Enfield Himalayan in our Tall Rider Reviews. If you were an Indian or ever been to India, you know the love we have for Royal Enfield. When I was 11, I actually learned how to ride motorcycle on a Royal Enfield Bullet Classic, and uh, I, I love that bike. 94% of Royal Enfield sales come from India, and, and that's not because it's made in India. You know, we, we actually love those bikes, especially the Bullet. It's really popular in India. They're all over the place. I have partnered with Indian Motorcycle of Pittsburgh and KTM of Pittsburgh dealership in the Warrendale area in, in Pennsylvania, just outside of Pittsburgh, and I am so pumped. You know, they're amazing people to work with. So if you're ever in the market for a KTM Indian or Royal, or Royal Enfield, please check them out. And thanks to them, you know, I'll get to relive my childhood by riding the Royal Enfield Bullet very soon. So consider subscribing to live that moment with me because without a doubt, I'll be filming that ride, that ride and, and that experience. Also, if you have any suggestions on other bikes, uh, please let me know in the comment section below. You know, this dealership, like I said, has KTM, Indian, and Royal Enfield. So if anything that interests you out of those three brands, please let me know and I'll try my best to get my hands on one of them. All right, let's get back to the Himalayan. Uh, thank you for tuning in. You know, before we get too ahead of ourselves, as always in this review series and most of my content on this channel, is designated to tall riders and their comfort on the motorcycle and motorcycle related items like gear etc i still do vlogs and ride reviews so if that interests you you know consider subscribing there will always be something for everyone on this channel let's get right into it let's start with my dimensions i am 6'5 198 pounds with a 34 inseam, I wear 34 34 in jeans and for my arms i wear a sleeve size 36 and for shoes, I wear a size 13. So hopefully that gives you enough information to compare yourself to my size. Now with that out of the way, let's jump into the review. Stay tuned till the end to see me ride the bike as well. Uh, so you guys can get a better idea of how I fit. And I did some drive-bys. I also did some circles and figure eights in front of the camera. So you guys can kind of get an idea of what this bike feels like and fits uh, while I'm sitting on the bike. Starting from the top, the reach of the bar is very natural. Everything is right where, would, where I would want it to be. The bars aren't too wide and the sweep isn't too aggressive. You know, I'm not pinching my elbows into, into my upper body. I, I think it's a great natural position and I'm very comfortable sitting on this bike. And of course, I'm you know, completely upright while I'm sitting on the bike and uh, you know, it's very comfortable. When standing up, I am leaned over just a bit. I completely forgot to adjust the camera for this shot, but I think you can still get a pretty good idea. Arms are a bit bend and lean just a bit. Not comfortable or uncomfortable. I mean, I, I could do this position for some short period of time, uh, but again, you know, this, is, this isn't going to be very comfortable over hours and hours of ride in this position. But of course, handlebars, they're an easy mod and you can fix that to however you like the riding position to be. Like personally, I don't like bars that are extremely wide and this Himalayan doesn't have that. So it fits me perfectly well and it fits my riding style and where I like my bars to be. But, you know, they're about what, anywhere from 40 to $80, depending on the quality you want to get, you can get, you can switch out the handlebars pretty easily. The reach to the levers is, I would say, you know, the, the usual. I have pretty long fingers and 99% of the time, I need to have adjustable levers to get a good fit. Uh, same case with this bike. The stock levers are not adjustable. Therefore, I would need to upgrade the levers for a better fit. As you can see, my fingers are going way over and, you know, we don't have a ton of uh, muscle or a pressure we can apply from the middle of our fingers. Ideally, you want the brakes and the clutch to be right at your fingertip, and, and, and so you can pull that with full force. The stock windscreen did just fine to block the wind. I did not experience any buffeting. This bike is borderline dangerous over 75, so you're not going very fast anyways for the wind to be a concern, 
but this bike isn't made for speed, so not knocking the bike for that at all. So I think the, the windscreen works perfectly fine as it is. You know, if you want it to go, the wind to go over your helmet, you can get an aftermarket screen. But this one puts the wind right at my, right up my uh, upper chest and uh, leaves my helmet in clean air, which I like personally. So honestly, you know, not a ton of complaints about the upper body, the arms, the head, the screen. I think every day, everything is very comfortable and very natural where it would want it to be. So let's work our way down to the legs. Of course, there is no issues flat floating the bike, but I think the seat is far too low for us tall riders. You know, going back to the purpose, they need lower seat height so you can easily put your feet down on the ground when you're, you know, going through some tough terrain. You know, this bike is meant to be climbing mountains and, you know, some overpasses and some dirt roads, some really gnarly terrain. So I completely understand why the seat needs to be a little bit lower than some of the other bikes, but um, it is a bit too low for us tall riders. So, you know, since we are talking about the fit of the bike, you know, I am going to deduct some points there. We could add some padding in the seat to raise it a bit, and, and I think that will be a little bit more comfortable. That padding will help with the knee angle and the positioning of the knee on the bike. As you can see with the stock crash bars, you know, I am hitting my knee on them while I'm sitting down. And, and you know, if my if my toes are back on the rear set, I definitely hit the the crash bars here. And over over a long period of time, that is going to get uncomfortable. And especially I can imagine standing up on the bike and all of a sudden sitting down and, and banging my knee into those crash bars. That could be a bit of a problem. So, and you know, I'm not entirely sure we can remove these bars at all. Um, I haven't looked into the aftermarket at all for this, unfortunately. So if we can't remove them, I would definitely want to add some padding on the seat so that way we are lifted up a bit. And that should give us enough room, maybe about an inch, and that should give us enough uh, room to clear our knee from that crash protection. So you could just, you know, pretty much stay in the relaxed position with your foot in the middle of the pegs, and have, you know, and, and that should be a solution for this as well. The kickstand is at an easily accessible location. You'll be surprised how many manufacturers screw this one up, but this is a, this is a great place for the kickstand. I unfortunately did not have a passenger to test the rear seat out with, uh, but I sat on it and, you know, seat seemed fine for an average height male, female. They would fit perfectly fine on the back. As promised, here are some clips of me riding the bike. Overall, I think the chassis of the bike is super balanced. I, you know, it, it, I was just doing circles here. I did some figure eights as well. and. It's very comfortable and it is. it didn't seem like it, the bike was not balanced or if it was top heavy at all. The engine is pretty low and the bike, and that's the heaviest part. And, you know, it felt extremely balanced. As you can see, you know, I, I fit pretty well on the bike. I, you know, like I said, the seat might be a little bit too low, but you know, I'm not knocking the bike for that too much since it's meant to, to be handling some tough terrain and you want to be able to easily put your feet on the ground. So I think overall it's a, it's a good fit.
So I think that, that about wraps up this video. As always, please leave your questions in the comment section. I always get back to every comment and question on the video. So don't hesitate. If you have suggestions, please also leave them below. This dealership is KTM Indian Roll Enfield, so I can get my hands on whatever bike you guys would like to see. If you enjoy the video, please consider subscribing and liking. I'll also be doing a ride review on this bike, so stay tuned for that and much more. As always, have a safe ride, and I'll see you guys on the next one.